guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you are getting another thrift to treasure. So if you guys watched my bonus video on Tuesday, the day of the release, you will know that I have a couple more videos in store for you. So today we are tackling the transfer called Candy Cane Cottage. And oh my gosh, you guys, I had to stop because I was limited on the amount of time I had available, but I could have just kept creating. So I cannot wait to show you what I came up with in today's video. Here is Candy Cane Cottage, and I'm going to just give you a little glimpse in here right away. Look at those botanicals. I love all the green and floral that Santa definitely caught my eye. I have been thinking about that truck too. Here are the three that I was like the whole time I'm creating, I'm like, I need to figure out a way to use those. But I love how vintage this looks and just the design. Um, the whole entire transfer is pretty darn amazing. For project one, I am always looking at thrifting these breadboards or cutting boards, whatever you want to call them. This one definitely needed to have a makeover. First and foremost, I took it outside. I sanded off all of that. I don't even know what it was on it. And I decided to use the Santa. I knew right away when I first opened that transfer book that I wanted to use him in one of the projects today. Because the whole book had a real vintage feel to it, I decided to use vintage linen from DIY. I applied one even coat to the top of this. I decided I was going to hand sand it uh, just to stress some of it back, just to give it a, an additional vintagey old uh, type of look. Here's what it looks like after I hand sanded it. I just randomly touched areas of it just to bring back that wood grain a bit on the board. Next, I grabbed Kindest Regards, and this is by far one of my favorite stamps. If I ever want to add a background to something, this is definitely my go-to along with the Le Courier. So what I'm doing here is I'm stamping the ink on it, but then I don't want the ink to be extremely vibrant, so I'm stamping off and then stamping on the board. And it allows um, me to have some ink on there, but it's just not like a super dark black. And I'm doing it very random. This does not have to be perfect. It's just to add a little bit of something something to the background. I love doing, um, you know, more of like a mixed media type of look. And that's what I'm going for here. Now it's time to lay the transfer down. Just a side note, make sure that your ink is completely dry before you lay that down. Uh, the ink is permanent, uh, but it does take just a little bit to have it dry. So I lay it down and um, I rub all over it. Then I take the transfer stick and I start on one side and I work my way down. And really, it is that easy, you guys. Uh, and I love how the Santa is looking on here. Now, the whole time I have, uh, or I'm laying this down, in my mind, I wanted to add like a clock to this and I had found this really kind of fun um, uh, stencil with clocks all over them and I tried it and I was not impressed. So at this point, I kind of cut my losses with that whole vision and I continued on. When you have a transfer uh, on a project, you do want to seal it. So I'm using Big Top and I'm just applying one even coat of Big Top to the entire piece. 
After that dried, I felt like it needed just a little something on the edges. So I am taking DIY's dark wax and I'm just applying a little bit of dark wax along the very edge of the board and just a little bit on the top to kind of blend it all in. And I think that really gives it that old vintage look and I love how this is turning out. Lastly, I was going to put a piece of twine in here. I decided to go with some ribbon and I have this ribbon left over from last year and I think all the colors of this ribbon tie the whole entire Santa together perfectly. I fed it through and then I just cut off a chunk and tied a knot and I love how it looks. For project two, anytime I can thrift some enamel wear, you guys, I'm thrifting it. I found a bunch of these like pots and last year I transformed several of them where I flipped them over and then I did something to the back side and you can hang them on walls and they look so super cute. So I was kind of torn on this one. I went through the book. There was a sand in there that really caught my eye. These candy canes did as well. I just went back and forth and I really thought the candy canes went just so good with this. So I decided to go that route. And keep in mind, when you are transforming items, sometimes it can be as simple as adding a transfer to a piece and it will be done. And I think that just by adding these candy canes to this with a little ribbon, completely transform this and it will be so cute. Added in a little holiday vignette hanging on a wall um, or even on a shelf. I think this is the perfect addition to this little piece of enamel wear. Now I'm adding the ribbon and at first I was going to put it through the hole and in the end I decided to put it around the base of this. I am going to add a little bit of like hot glue to kind of hold it in place. I do plan on bringing this with me to Cranberry Fest and I think it will definitely be scooped up right away. Lastly, I do always add just a top coat to my piece. I'm using Big Top here. You definitely want to seal your transfers just to give them that little bit of added protection. For project three, I thrifted this Pottery Barn bench or stool and it was $3.99 at uh, the local Goodwill and I love transforming these little stools. I think that they can be just used in so many different areas whether you have it in a kitchen or in a living room to put your feet on or just a little vignette and I was going to really embrace the imperfections on this. Uh, what I did was I washed it up really well and there was a few little scratches and things like that. So I went outside, I sanded it, and I just well, basically distressed any of the raised areas 
wiped it all down, and now I am using this really fun transfer. I love it, Grandma Kringle's Traditional Candy Canes. And this will be perfect in a grandma's home, I think, for the holidays. Uh, especially if you, you know, she has her grandkids over, they can sit on it, they can use it as a step stool in the kitchen while making cookies. Um, I just thought it was perfect. So I line it all up. I want to make sure that it is completely centerized. And once I have it all set, I rub it with my hands and then I start taking my transfer stick, start on one side and work my way over. What I love about the IOD transfers is there's so much beautiful detail. They are so easy to use. What I like to do is start in one corner and that backing sheet, I just always hold on to that. Start rubbing and like I said, just work my way from one side of the transfer to the other. If at any point a piece of the transfer does not come off that sheet, just lay it right back down, rub again, and it will come right off. And it is, like I said, such an easy process to totally transform whatever piece you are working on. Feeling it that the transfer is down and I just apply one even coat over the top and I also did the rest of the stool as well because I had hand sanded it. For project four, I found this silver platter or plate, whatever you want to call it, while I was out thrifting. Uh, what caught my eye was the beautiful detail on the edges. Unfortunately, because of all the tarnishing, you can't really see that beautiful detail. So I'm using vintage linen from DIY Paint. I'm applying two even coats to the front and the bottom. I'm going to let it dry very well. And then we're going to come back and we're going to bring back some of that detail and add a transfer to completely tie this whole piece together. The two coats of paint are completely dry and I'm going in and wet distressing it. Anytime I'm working with wood, I don't mind using my hand sander, but when I'm working with a piece like this, I take a damp rag and I randomly just start wiping over all the raised surfaces to really start bringing back that detail. And I again, I just do it randomly all over the piece and as you can see, now you're really seeing all that detail and that tarnishing underneath is still there. So it really enhances it. Now it's time to add that transfer. I decided to go with one of these little floral pieces. It fit perfectly in the center and I really think that it tied all that beautiful detail on the edges because there was it looked like little leaves and floral in that detail and I think it was the perfect added touch to this. Lastly, what I did is I sealed the whole piece with Big Top. I don't need to show you guys that again, but it is completely done and I love it. For project five, I thrifted these little milk glass plates. I actually got three or four sets of them and I decided with this set, we were going to transform them with these transfers. 
I am taking four of the transfers that look very similar and I am going to just simply add them to the center of each of these plates. These will not be able to be used um, to eat off of, but I thought as home decor, they would be perfect. I will be selling them in the set of four, so you can display them on a shelf or, um, you know, even if you have a china cabinet, you could display them in there. I just think that they are so vintagey looking and these florals were a perfect addition to them. I do the exact same thing that I did on the other projects. I place it directly in the center and just start rubbing and I work my way um, onto all four of them and it goes on super quick and easy. Lastly, I do seal them. These are not intended for food purposes, but in case somebody does need to wipe them off with a damp rag, I definitely do not recommend submersing them in water or using in a dishwasher. Uh, so after that, they are set to go. Project 6 is by far one of my favorites. I loved these three transfers from the moment I opened up the transfer itself. I was thinking the entire time as I was working through all these other projects, how can I use them? What can I use them on? And then I looked over and there were these three books and they matched perfectly with these three transfers. Next, I took out the um, this old vintage hymnal and I started ripping out different pages and that is what I'm going to use to cover some of the wording on the front covers and I just randomly just tear towards me to have a little bit more control and again I just wanted the very first book that I'm working on I needed to cover the entire front cover because there's a lot of wording on and with the other two covers there's just not as much. Now that I have it perfectly in place, I'm using liquid patina, definitely my go-to uh, solution for decoupage paper, and uh, it is just a great decoupage medium in general. So I am laying just a nice even layer, and I do this when I use my Roy Cycle decoupage papers as well. I do a starter strip. This really helps prevent wrinkles. It also helps you have better control over your piece. So I don't want this to move, and by doing that starter strip, it holds it in place, and then I start working my way down. And I love how it has perfect coverage. The paper is thick enough. You can't see that background at all. And again, I just work out any um, bubbles that are underneath or I smooth it out, any wrinkles. And I just add one even coat over the entire top. And then I'm going to start working on the next book while this one dries. Now the next book does not need as much coverage and I really love that color of the book. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tearing off a chunk on the bottom and a chunk on the top and then the sides and we're just going to cover up that middle section. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the previous book, the starter strip and all that good stuff. But I love how it's just in the center on this book. And then on the next book, we're going to make it look completely different. 
This one, I don't want to cover a lot of that blue up. It is so beautiful and really ties in with that truck. So I'm just going to use a little chunk on the left-hand side and again, tear towards me um, and it gives you a little better control. We're gonna decoupage it the exact same way, but I just wanted to show you like my vision here. Now it's time to add the transfers and I am loving how this is all coming together. I position each of the transfers a little differently on each of the books and it's so easy to add the transfers. After I get all three transfers on each of the books, I do seal them. I always seal over all my transfers. It just gives it that added protection. I was kind of going back and forth whether or not I should use liquid patina to seal it or big top. In the end, I chose big top and I just applied one even coat over the entire book. The last step here for these is I wanted to add just a little bit of decoration to the book. I felt like it was missing something, so I added, added a bit of twine to each of them. I just wrapped it three times, and then I also added a little bit of ribbon to each of the books. I just think that it ties them together, so if somebody wanted to buy all three, they would be coordinating, or if they are sold individually, um, they would look really great in a vignette together as well. For project seven, and this is my final project today. I know I normally do only five projects, but I wanted to do a whole lot more, guys. Well, I thrifted this box a while ago, and anytime I find cute little crates like this, I grab them. I washed it very thoroughly, so it's a little damp yet here in the um, video, uh, but I am using vintage linen from DIY, and I'm applying two even coats to the entire piece. I definitely want to have good coverage. I am going to go and bring it outside and distress it to bring back some of that dark wood here and there. Um, but again, overall, I want to have a nice even coat. Here it is, all distressed and beautiful looking. I love it. And now it's time to add those transfers. These are the first two in this book. And my vision for this is I want to put one on the top corner and then the other one on the front. And I think it's just gonna tie it in perfectly. I thought about adding some other wording to it, but I was thinking, no, this just needs to be very simplistic and I just love it. I think this turned out beautiful and these florals, you guys, are absolutely breathtaking. Wait till you see them in person. I start on the top and I just rub from one side to the other and right away I'm like, yes, I, this is exactly what I'm envisioning. Now this one, I want a little bit of it to peek over the top as well. So I position it just perfect and I made sure that the little um, knob was latched because it is going to be, um, when you lay it down initially, it's still one full transfer 
And again, you just want to be very careful when you're using or when you're transferring on this top. And then I just start working my way from the top all the way down. After I get this completely on, I am going to take my little, I think it's like an X-Acto knife. This thing has come in so handy these last few weeks for me. And I am going to take that little X-Acto knife and I am going to slice just directly through it open it up and just rub on both sides. And there you have it, you guys. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed creating it. I had so much fun just trying to figure out different ways to use a transfer. It is so easy to use the IOD transfers to apply them to virtually anything. Uh, and it's just fun to try to find very unique and different ways to create with them. By far, my favorite were the books. Honestly, I looked at those three little transfers and those are caught my eye right away, you guys. I'm like, oh, I want to do something with them, but I want to do something unique. I don't want to just make a tag or, you know, I just was trying to think outside the box. And then I looked over and I have a big stack of vintage books there and the colors matched perfect. So as you can see, um, then I took that vintage music paper and tied it all together, added a little mixed media look to it. I had just a ton of fun. I probably could have gone further, um, but I like sometimes a little simplicity as well. So Monday's video is going to be another round of the new IOD. And if you did not get your hands on either or any of the transfers, do not fret because I have those coming in. As soon as I receive them, I will definitely put a notice out on my Facebook page and I will get those listed right away. So you guys have yourselves a great weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.